period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Verse 4. On one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they, then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Verse 7, he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You may be seated. Let's pray. Uh, Father, we come again to say, uh, first of all, just to say thank you for uh, allowing us all to be in worship, and uh, to, to hear your Zion song hear the prayers that have been lifted up. Uh, we've gathered just to worship you and to give you glory, honor, and praise. So Father, we're asking right now that as the preaching moment is here, that your people would see you and not me and hear from you and not I, but they would look beyond all my faults and failures and see the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross. Father, I pray that you would move in a mighty way that uh, you will have your way. And Father, I pray that your word would fall on good ground today. Uh, and if there be any unchurched or unsaved today, that through the preaching of the gospel, someone might accept you as Lord and Savior. And Father, I pray right now this prayer in your son's name, Jesus' name, amen. 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 As we uh, take a few minutes to just talk with you for a little bit, uh, don't want to take long, just want to finish up uh, what we started a couple weeks ago. Uh, as it relates, we talked about mission uh, Sunday. Right. Uh, but I will ask, I asked them two weeks ago, I believe, asked a question uh, in the beginning of the message, I believe, we were doing service, asked the question, would the mission ministry please stand? All right. Amen. Y'all, y'all, amen. Amen, all right. Amen. 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 Bless you. And I believe at the end of the message, we ask, would the mission ministry please stand? Amen. 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 I'm going to try one more time. We ask the question. Amen. Amen. There you go, say. <laughs> Amen. There's the Mrs. Minister. Please stand. Amen. Amen. All right, we've got a few more with Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. That was a trick question, but the message was everybody's a witness. Everybody has a responsibility to be a witness. So that's all we talked about. So we'll give a quick summary and we'll pick up on the new, the new stuff here in about 12 more minutes. But I want to do a review because uh, some folks wasn't here on June 25th. Uh, that are here on today. I'll just share it with you briefly. We're celebrating Mission Ministry and all the work that they have been doing here at Pleasant Green and, and, and abroad. And uh, basically, we, we did for intro, talked about how the, uh, when you were, were qualified to be a disciple, qualified to be a witness. And the intro back uh, a couple weeks ago was uh, how we all been unemployed and we didn't think we were qualified for a job. We read the job description, uh, but to come and find out that uh, we didn't have all the qualifications, but yet we had some of them. Amen. And how we referenced how we read that big old long job description. You had to have a master's, a bachelor's, a PhD, and that's just to, uh, to, to, to call somebody on the phone. You know, different things of that nature. But uh, the good news is that all of us are qualified to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Amen. No matter what your background looks like, we're all qualified to be a witness for Jesus Christ. We talked about how Luke, the author, the great physician, well educated. Uh, basically detailed in the book of Acts as we talked about the existence, the existence of the church uh, was definitely exciting because oftentimes Acts chapter 2 
has also been studied and preached. And many of us know all about it in reference to how the church ought to look. Um, the church don't quite look all the way like it does in Acts chapter 2, but we get there. When you get a chance to read Acts chapter 2 when you get an opportunity. It says they broke bread together. They fellowship together. They got along. They got along. They got along for the cause of Christ. Uh, your ministry, their ministry, one ministry wasn't bigger than the other ministry. The ushers wasn't better than the deacons. And the deacons wasn't better than the choir members. And the culinary committee wasn't better than the... Y'all know what I'm saying, man? Somebody. They got along in three chapter two. They fellowship. They broke bread together. And they got along. And so that's just a blessing because they had one thing in common. And so as we get to this particular text, and we talked about how last week and how uh, before we got to what's titled the Ascension, there was the Resurrection. Y'all know about the Resurrection. Uh, how Jesus was placed between two criminals and they crucified him on an old rugged cross. They buried him and he stayed all night Friday and stayed all night Saturday. But early Sunday morning, Jesus, our Savior, got up with all power in his hand. Now, I know this is not exciting, the fact that Jesus died for our sins and that he is coming back one day. I love it because before we get here, it tells me that a whole lot is going on in our Savior's life. And I love it because oftentimes it's good to have a history on where we came from. I imagine some of us didn't make it to church, uh, but there was some history. Something happened in our lives that led us to 2002 Willis Avenue or led us to 55, 55 Larimore. Yes, sir. And I would speculate there's about five of y'all that it wasn't a good situation. Oh, God had to bring all of us down at one time to bring us on our knees oh, to remind us that yes, God is still in control. Yes, to remind us that we're headed in the wrong direction. Right. But I love it because the text says when we look at that after he got up with all power, in his hand, he returned, he had a conversation with his disciples. And we talked about Acts chapter 1, and we look at this, uh, it's, exci it's exciting to me because um, um, when it comes to being a witness, and we're all qualified to be a witness for Jesus Christ. We talked about point number one uh, was, who's responsible? Um, in the text, it goes, all it says is them. And look at verse number one. Uh, it says who he was talking to, and after he presented himself to them, verse 3, to them, he, he gave proofs to them that he was alive, and he appeared to them over a period of 40 days, and, and he ate with them. And so the question is, in case somebody want to know, whose responsibility is it to be a witness and a disciple? It's our responsibility. Right. Talked about sharing. It's just not the disciples' responsibility. It's everything. Responsibility. It's, it's just not the preacher's responsibility. It's not just the deacon's responsibility. It's everybody's responsibility to be a witness for Christ. Are there any witnesses in the building? I'll stay. I'll stay. I got time. I ain't going to start till 3.30. And so it helps me because it, it lets us all know that it's our job to share the gospel with Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, and those who have been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, it's our responsibility to tell somebody about Jesus. Right. And I love it because it, it, it gets me excited because he includes everybody right. to them. Yeah. And, and I'm looking at some to them yeah. in the building today. Uh, some, some former alcoholics and addicts and drug dealers and liars and cheaters and backstabbers. He's allowing us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. With our backgrounds as raggedy as they was, he still is using us. Come on, I have some folks in here who are glad that God has called you to be a witness. I love it because there's we don't got no Pharisees and Sadducees. We got some Gentiles and some folks that say, you know what? I'm glad to be a witness. Matter of fact, I want my life to shine so I can tell somebody where God has brought me from. Anybody not ashamed in the background? Now you are a disciple and God has called you to be a witness. I love it. I, I'm getting a little excited because he's called a witness and he just does not to be a witness but he's given us a promise that, that, that we 
said if you're not going to do all these promises yes. that he will be with us at. He will give us everything that we are. I got some folks looking at me crazy. Let me get back to the text. It's all in the text. He's talking to his disciples. And he said, look, uh, um, just, just wait here because there's a promise that my father is going to give us. And we know, we know the promise is the Holy Spirit. He, he, we're waiting on the Holy Spirit to come. Who's our comforter and who's our helper? He's our guide. And I think y'all know about the promise in here. So I'm not going to insult nobody, but there's some folks who are standing on the promises of God. There's some folks who look back over your life that you're standing on the promises of God. He promised never to leave you nor forsake you. Promise to supply your every need. Promise to forgive us of our sins. Promise to keep a roof over your living grave. He is our protector when we need protection. He's our deliverer when we need deliverance. I'm so glad that as a witness and a child of God, we have his power. Not only do we have his power, we talk about what we need. That's what we need. We need His power. We, yes. we, we don't need, the text says He gives us the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. And it ain't, it's His power. We, we don't need a whole lot of plans. And we don't need a whole lot of uh, gimmicks. We just need His power. Yes. We don't need to hang no signs or, or social media. We just need His power. Yes. If we have His power, yes. wonder working power, yes. on the inside of us, we can do some great things, pleasant green. What I love about it, he said, we don't need diplomas. Brother Craddock, we don't need degrees. We can be black or white, rich or poor. But as long as we have his power, we can do anything but fail. Come on, tap your neighbor and say, we got his power. That's all we need, pleasant green. We just need his power. And, 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 and if we're qualified to be a witness, we just need his power. And it's our responsibility. But also in the text, in that same text. Now you mind, we've got the disciples. They're sitting around with Jesus. In verse number 7, Jesus says to them, It is not for you to know the times and the dates that my Father has set by his own authority. Verse 8, But ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, comes on you, and ye shall be my witnesses. I need to help help myself and help somebody else because a lot of times we wonder who we work for. We, we wonder who's paying our paychecks. Well, text says when you're qualified to be a witness, you ought to know who you're working for. The text says you shall be my witnesses. I'll shout for you right there. We work for the Lord. He's telling his disciples that, look, when you go out and you talk about them, let them know who you work for. Let them know where your power comes from. Give them your business card. Y'all know how we do the business card? Uh, anybody got business cards in here? Come on, just we out here in a few more minutes. Anybody got a business card? It's almost like when you go out into the workforce and, and, you, and they want to know who you are, just if you have no business card. See, I, I'm Steve Walker with Huber Cadillac. I'm a salesman. Here's my phone number. Here's my credentials. This is what I do. Handle your business card. Because if you look back on the disciples' lives, they ain't always, I ain't good grammar, they ain't always been working for the Lord. Peter, Andrew, James, and John were self-employed. They were fishing. Yes, sir. They were working for themselves. And I don't know if I got some business owner. It's tough when you work for yourself sometimes. Because every now and then your business might run a little short. You don't have to come on, say amen over here. Somebody. The customers don't come in like they used to. And you might got to cut back your hours or lay folks off, but they ain't always work for the Lord. I believe another disciple, Matthew, he worked for the government. He, he, he was a tax collector. And, and he had to do some things he did not like to do. He had to 
cheat some folks out of their money. And I know there's some folks in the building today that work for some companies that lay it off folks. Don't make me pull some money. I know some of us that work for some folks who've let you down. Who've cut back on your hours and taken away from your incentive plan and crushed your benefits. But at the end of the day, if you are a child of God, you work it for the Lord. I don't think you believe me because, can I tell you what's the benefits? Because when you're working for the Lord, he said, mine, that's personal. And I love it because that means I am his and he is mine. And as a child of God, it is good to hear your father say, that's my children. Let me tell you a little bit more because when you, when you work for the Lord, it, it blessed me because I've come to understand, Sister Smith, when you're working for the Lord, you have one goal in mind. Amen. There's one person you're going to please. And that's the Lord Almighty. And so I, I see the text, it bless me because when you're working for the Lord, he, he never goes bankrupt. He offers great benefits. He can lift heavy burdens. He provides great training. He delivers when it's time to be delivered. He lifts when it's time to be lifted. All I'm trying to say is the disciples know who they're working for. He forgives. He rewards. He elevates the humble. I'm so glad that I work for the Lord. Anybody working for the Lord here? Come on, let me see. Do you work for the Lord? Come hell or high water, no matter how folks treat you, you work for the Lord. Pleasant Green, don't worry about getting paid because if one day we're going to get paid. At. One day when this life is over, it's payday. You don't believe me? I don't believe me. I love it because Moses, every now and then he had to tell Pharaoh who he worked for. Y'all know the story. Say amen if you know the story. He said, look, well, this is what you ought to tell him. He said, look. He said, Moses said to God, he said, look, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, God of your fathers have sent me to you. And they asked me, I said, what, what is his name? He said, tell them that I am who I am. God said, tell them the Lord, the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent you. Pleasant Green, when you go out and be a witness, just tell them who sent you. Don't tell them about Pastor Payton. Don't tell them about Deacon Walker. And don't tell them about the drummer. Tell them about Jesus. Tell them about the King of Kings. Tell them about the Lord of Lords. Tell them about the God you serve. That's who you work for. That's on your business card. Tell them you've been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Anybody been filled in here? Let's go home. Our time is up. The text says, know who you work for. I just believe if you know who you work for. We work a little bit hard. I just believe when we know who keeps us, we'll sacrifice on the job just a little bit more. Because don't you know when you're serving the Lord, you got to sacrifice some things. You got to take some ridicule every now and then. But good news is we work for the Lord. They, they, they were qualified because they knew what they worked for. But let me leave you with this. Is, 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 if you want to be a witness, somebody might say, well, what's my job title? Come on, y'all to say it, man. Everybody, most everybody like a title. Okay, all right. All right. The text says he gives them a title. Good news, everybody in the church got a title. We all got a title. And, 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 and I love it because it says he shall the title is a witness. Amen. That's our title. And then don't get caught up in the director of this and director of that and pastor and preacher. Your title is witness. You don't have to worry about being the head of the kitchen committee or head of the finance seat. Don't worry.
Philadelphia Reader. Zach says their title was a witness. Everybody be witness because witnesses, all witnesses is one who testifies to the fate uh, of their own personal knowledge of what they've seen and have experienced. And I, I'm going to jump out of you because I bet everybody in here is a witness to what God has done in your life. I just believe that you and I are qualified because you and I are a witness for God. I don't, I'm going to go down the roads this morning because I see a whole bunch of witnesses for Christ our Lord and Savior. I love it because he said ye are my witnesses. So no matter where you are, you are a witness. When you're in the, when you're Walmart, you're still a witness. When you're on your job, you're still a witness. In your home, you're still a witness. When you're walking down the street, you're still a witness. Let me interject. Some folks ain't coming to Christ because our witness is raggedy. Come on, y'all to say, man. Ain't nobody perfect. We've all got some faults, but we gotta watch our witness because we don't know who's watching us. Oh, y'all gonna make it. Uh, let's see y'all. Something too long. Y'all not moving. Let me try. Let me see. How do I? How do I know? Um, um, we're a witness is because folks are watching everything that we do. Let, let, let me be transparent. Um, every now and then, I like to hear old music. Every now and then, I. In my daughter's car, and these new cars, they got serious in it. Y'all look at me, y'all, come on up. You know, somebody got the satellite, and, 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 and there's satellite in the cars. Yeah. And, and, and there's a station that I like to listen to. And it, it goes way back. But I got to be careful, because when I start saying the lyrics, some words slipped out of my mouth. And, and, and my daughter, I'm going somewhere, don't, don't look at me crazy. I, I'm not perfect. But I like to hear some old Snoop and N.W.A. every now and then. And some Biggie Small, y'all look at me like y'all been sick. Some Biggie Smalls. Every now and then I like to hear some Kumo D. And every now and then I like to go back to uh, 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 Bushwick Bill. And every now and then some things too short. And some things come out of my mouth because I get caught up in the moment. But I, but I got to be careful because my daughter knows the kind of music I used to listen to. And she done told my other kids, look, watch daddy say this word when it come out. And, 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 and I gotta catch myself. Because I, I get in the moment because I failed to realize that even with my raggedy past, I'm still a witness to somebody in the future.
title is witness. Amen. Well, let me leave. My time's up. Okay, so I'm qualified. I know I'm responsible to be a witness. I know what I need to be a witness. Now I got a title. I'm happy I got a title. Now where? Now what am I going to do next? Well, it's time to get started. The text says, now that you know, now it's time to get out and be a witness. The text says, where do I go? In Jerusalem? Yeah. All Judea yeah. and Samaria. Let me go home on this. On. It, it tells you. He said, look, disciple, here's what I need you to do. I need you to get out of these walls. Yeah. You've been commissioned. You've been called. Now I just can't stay in the room. You got to get outside. Y'all look at the Let me have a point. That means all the preaching and teaching at Pleasant Green Baptist Church. We can't hold on to it. We got to take it outside. We can't keep it to ourselves. He said, go to root. Start in your hometown and start with your family and start with your friends. If you're going to be a witness, first start in your own house. Clean up your own house first before we try to clean somebody else's house. Everybody got to be saved in your house. That's all it says. We got to start close. Start to the ones you love. Then he said, get a little further. Get out in your He said, stretch out a little further and get out into the neighborhoods and community. So Pleasant Green, if we don't make a difference in Omaha, Nebraska, we got to get out into our neighborhoods. We got to clean up our streets with the word of God. If your family is saved and my family is saved and the neighbor is saved, the neighborhood would be saved. We got to be a witness on the block. On the block, I know who you are. By your wit you don't got to hang a Bible out in front of your driveway. You don't, y'all don't put the signs. To it. Can you tell me why you got to go? Tell him I know a man named Jesus. I was lost, but he found me. I was blind, now I see. Be a witness in your neighborhoods. And, and then after you get done, here's the, here's the hard part, Rev. Smith. We got to go out to some places we don't like to go. In Samaria, we had to expand where folks weren't like us and like the disciples. They had to go to get in some uncomfortable positions. I love we're going to make a difference. We got to go where we don't want to go. Y'all ain't start saying, man. We got to go where we don't want to go. We got to reach them to the outermost and the alleyways and the gutters and shelters and family and friends. We got to reach out to some folks who we wouldn't normally reach out to. Oh, Y'all going to make me do it. Can I tell you why? Can I tell you why we got to do that? Because we ain't always been dressed up like this. Some of us came from the gutter. Some of us have been messy on the inside. But yet somebody came and got you. We got to go get them. Yeah, we got to go get them. We got to get out of Samaria. We got to time out for trying to witness. See, the problem with the Baptist church, we like to fish and witness to other churches. Amen, Pastor Page. Amen, Pastor Page. We like to witness to other church members. We try to draw members of Zion and draw members of Pilgrim and other churches. We got to reach the unchurched and the unsaved. There is plenty of unsaved, unchurched folks in Omaha, Nebraska, that we can have five services and six services and seven. Y'all look at me crazy. That's the mission of the church. Where somebody said, Robert, why are we going to an 8 o'clock service when we can't even feel an 11 o'clock service? Well, it's because we about to go out and get some folks. We, oh, y'all looking crazy. We're going to go get them and bring them in. We're going to snatch them from the hands of the devil. We're going to bring in so look and hear about a man named Jesus who came down through 42 generations and healed the sick and raised the dead.
This ain't no shouting sermon because you don't understand where you came from. A lot of us, a lot of us think that God just saved us. Well, there's some other folks we need to get. There's some folks we need to grab. There's some folks who need the gospel just like we need the gospel. There's some folks who need what we have. This ain't ours. The gospel that we carry is for everybody. Pleasant Green, I've been challenged. I challenge you that we have to be witnesses in the way we talk, the way we walk. And before you Tear down your brother or sister. Ask yourself, am I being a good witness? Before I bring down my brother or sister in the household of faith, ask yourself, am I being a good witness? When my brother or sister comes to me in need and I don't help them and I know I can't, Am I being a good witness? When ministries want to work together and you think you own the ministry, it's your ministry. If I don't sing, the choir won't hear me. If I don't preach, nobody's going to come. Loosen the grip. This ain't ours. If I don't cook, nobody's going to eat. If I don't play, won't nobody stand. Am I being a good witness? Am I being a good witness? Is my light shining? That's challenging, folks, because all of us are just where we get vulnerable sometimes, and, and, and we we forget. I'm, I'm guilty of you. We react and like, oh shoot, I'm the pastor. I'm, I'm a child of God. Come on, y'all, say man. Y'all, y'all done. No, y'all done. It. But we are twenty four seven. Because God sees us. So pleasant green, everybody here is qualified. And you have what you need. Now, it's time for us to take it out in the streets. Tell everybody you can. 13 people went out in the streets on yesterday. And told somebody about Jesus. So that's my challenge and encouragement. Qualified to be a witness. So somebody who might be here today that does not know Jesus. Good news is, is today you got another chance. You got another chance. In order to be a witness, the reason why the disciples were in the upper room when they when they were in the room with Jesus because they had a relationship with Jesus. So the first move is you have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So if you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we extend him to you on today. You may come as a candidate for baptism, letter, or even on your Christian experience.